The Boundary Surface feature puts high-quality surfacing into the hands of all Onshape users. The Boundary Surface approach uses sets of curves from each direction, the U and the V direction, to form a four-sided closed surface with options to specify boundary conditions such as tangency matching, normal to profile, and more. First, create the wireframe for your geometry. This typically includes the purpose-built 3D curve tools or groups of sketches. Then start defining the boundary surface by selecting edges or curves, optionally specifying boundary conditions that make sense for the situation. Turning on curvature analysis tools will help you understand how the surfaces blend via curvature combs, control point grids, curvature mapping, and zebra stripes. The boundary surface is an excellent choice for situations that demand precise control. In this case, we create a rounded edge that could have been accomplished with a fillet, but in industrial and consumer product design, there are many considerations for how geometry should come together in the most pleasing way cosmetically and for manufacturing. Here, we can create a surface that blends just the way we want, adjusting the magnitude of the sides of the boundary surface to get the effect that we're looking for. One thing to note, the loft feature and fill feature are capable features and may be more appropriate in certain situations. For example, the fill tool will create an n-sided patch, three or five edges for example, but it may be prone to pinch points in some cases because of the math involved. See the difference in surface continuity in this particular example using the Onshape Compare screen. The flexibility of Onshape's surface design toolkit, which now includes boundary surface, will provide Onshape users the means to build great looking product designs using a modern and agile design approach. A new option has been added to the Curve and Surface Analysis tool that displays a control point grid that is useful for understanding the defining geometry of a spline surface. The control point grid shows a location of the control points on the underlying B-spline curves that define the surface or curve. The number and distribution of the control points provides essential information about the underlying math, which defines the shape of the surface and can be instrumental in troubleshooting. Typically, it's desirable to have as few control points as possible and smoothly distributed while still obtaining the required shape. It is now very easy to understand the angle in which two faces or curves come together. This is important when doing any kind of surface modeling to interrogate the design to understand what's going on. We are excited to introduce one of the most requested improvements to the Extrude tool, Extrude Direction. Extrude Direction allows you to extrude in the direction of a line, a plane, or a mate connector. In this example, we create the geometry that joins the head and handle of an RFID scanner. This extrude can now be driven with an up-to-next constraint. Previously, you had to make sure that there was a next piece of geometry that would completely interfere with the extrusion. Otherwise, up-to-next would fail. You can now drive the direction of the extrude with a line to make sure there will be interference. With this improvement, you can accelerate the time it takes to construct a wide range of geometry and reduce the feature count in your part studios. Drawing the direction of an extrude is simple using a mate connector. As you select the direction option, you will notice the mate connector symbol appears. Create a mate connector and use the rotational manipulator to quickly alter the direction of the extrusion. You can also combine these directions with drafts to create geometry that would conventionally take multiple features to define. The direction of the extrude will be applied to the second end position as well, making it easy to extend the geometry. Lastly, you can use planes and other geometry to drive your extrusion. By using a combination of a line and a line angle plane, you can easily manipulate the extrude direction of your geometry. Use the final button to see how the plane angle fundamentally changes this extrusion. This improvement to the Extrude tool allows you to add a starting offset to an extrusion, both when adding or removing geometry. With this new option, it's a lot faster to create more controlled extrusions. By using the starting offset, you can reduce the amount of sketches necessary to create certain features such as holes, inner features, and more. You can create a starting offset both as a blind direction or a reference to an entity, such as in the example. With this improvement, you will have more control over your extruded geometry, improving your experience when creating a wide array of features.
New in this update, instead of going to the custom features dropdown menu at the top of the screen to find the features that you have subscribed yourself to, you can now customize your S key or shortcut toolbar and add any custom features that you have indeed subscribed to. Here I have added the spur gear uh, feature, but I'm gonna use the belt feature in this case so I can uh, lay a belt between all these shafts here. We have added folders to the made features, allowing you to clean up your assembly tree and organize your constraints. Your ability to organize your assemblies is improving, as you can now group all the mates into folders, making them more accessible when working and editing. This will help you sort your constraints, empowering you when working in large assemblies, creating configurations, name positions, or setting up simulations. It is now easy to create a hatch region using predefined sketch geometry or with geometry created on the fly on the drawing. As you can see here, we can create polygons, circles, rectangles, and splines, or select from a closed profile. This is useful for identifying regions on the model that require special treatment, such as grinding, polishing, area identification, such as text and scribing. Simply go ahead and set your hatch to your desired properties and accept. The styles panel now supports the ability to edit hatch patterns on the fly. Select one or more hatch patterns, edit the style of your choice. If there are two conflicting styles, it will note that. On shape inspection items now export the upper and lower tolerance and automatically calculates them. In Onshape, you can create inspection bubbles natively on your drawing and export them to an inspection list. In this update, we provide the automatic calculation of the upper and lower limits. And of course, you can easily format this to the standard of your choice. In this improvement to publications, you can create a clone of a publication you've already made. This allows you to create a new publication that can be updated and edited, creating new publications for multiple use cases such as supplier access or collaboration cross-functionally across teams. It is now possible to create general tasks from any element inside of an Onshape document. Right-click on a tab or a part, and you will be able to create the general task which allows for due dates, and assignments to other people. You can view your action items in the menu underneath your name and see all of the action items that you have yet to accomplish. And accomplish them, of course. View the task, which will bring you right back to the task screen, and you can see references, who's involved, and click right back into the document involved. User modeling dashboards showing modeling time now clarify how projects develop over time showing modeling time on a specific day. The data can be reached from three total places on Onshape Enterprise accounts from the activity overview, the user dashboard for modeling time, as well as user activity. Now, if you have any imported functions, you will have the ability to automatically hyperlink to those import operations. Here you can see I have used the boolean.fs called that in and there is now a link right back to the original. Improvements have been made to the feature script profiler that allows for performance tuning of features when the part is referenced outside of the document where the feature studio exists. Here is a feature studio with a multi-split feature. We have a part studio that uses that feature to split the torus into small pieces. Typically, when users want to see what parts of their Feature Studio are executing slowly, they would have to put a Part Studio in the same workspace as the Feature Studio and then profile that Part Studio. But in many cases, you have features in one document and Part Studios that use that feature in another document in another version. Now, if we profile this Part Studio, you'll notice here that it shows the regeneration of the version of that Part Studio that was just profiled. We now have the same profiling results in a different document. If you open up the Feature Script Notices panel, you will see where this result came from. And in this case, it came from Part Studio 1 in the other Global Profiler demonstration document. 
It is now simple to navigate back to that document to see what part studio was actually regenerated, which provides clues for performance tuning. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.